prep versus everybody. Hey, man, my name is um, Charles, Charles Lincoln. Last week, again, th this year has not been normal by any means. I, I think everybody's kind of understanding of that, but, you know, not having the time in the off season that we would typically have with, with seven on sevens and being able to really develop and, and kind of bring along a team, it almost felt more as if it was an extended practice. The team just play hard, honestly, and just execute. That's all we gotta do. I'm feeling confident. We're gonna have a lot of rushing yards on them. No words. Every helmet to the ball. You see a black shirt? Hit him. Let them feel you, all right? The best rivalries will occur twice in one season. And with that said, round one between Cathedral Prep and McDowell kicks off on Friday night. Mike Fenner has more. When it comes to high school football in Northwest Pennsylvania, there's not a more intense rivalry than when McDowell and Cathedral Prep go head to head. Going back a long time, it's always been two of the bigger schools in the area and, you know, two really good programs that have had great games against each other. And I think that brings not only the energy for the players and staff, but the student body in, the, in both communities. Prep McDowell's a huge rivalry and uh, it's something we look forward to every single year. And we'll get it twice this year, but, you know, we want to, you know, we want to do our best to come out on top on Friday. I mean, I know they're going to. You know, they're going to be ready and well coached and playing, playing hard, but I think our kids will be ready as well. With both teams entering Friday's showdown 2-0 in a condensed six-game regular season schedule, there's a lot of anticipation on both sides for some new key contributors to make noise under the Friday Night Lights at Gus Anderson Field. It's just the energy. It just I don't know. And some about the energy that transferred into the players, and we just can feel the energy. But, like, we have to have the energy this year because we don't really have fans like that, so... We'll just have to see what happens. I think we're doing great, honestly, and uh, I'm just prepared. We're all prepared for prep. We're not thinking about anything else besides prep. And uh, we're getting locked in, and we're ready to go. And after a 29-26 to classic that saw the Ramblers earn a win last October at the Gus, prep looks to continue its long winning streak in the series and take control of the driver's seat in Region 9. It's just exciting to play them because just the competition there, it's just an uh, emotional game. Meanwhile, the Trojans, led by senior QB Chris Yukno, see it as a massive opportunity to leave their legacy on a classic rivalry in the first of two matchups this fall. Our seniors are really leading out here. They're showing all these kids, that the younger kids, what prep week's like, although it's not under normal conditions, but um, it's prep week, so you really got to ball out and go 110% in practice. Mike Fenner, Jet 24, Action Sports. One running away from something, and there's one trying to get something. Today, we the one trying to get something. They the one that's running away. So play like that. Every play, 100%. Every time they run the ball, anytime a blue jersey got that ball, I better see every white jersey on that field attacked. Go get them. Hit them in the mouth. Hit them where it hurts. I want to hit them all day. They want to go. They can't wait till this game over. Come on, man. We got to go. Hey, man, let's turn it up, man. Let's get it. Let's go, y'all. We the ones right here, man. We the ones. Let's go. Give us all three. One, two, three. Yeah. Like Coach said, hit them in the mouth on offense. Play physical, play confident, play smart. All right, we're not happy unless we go score 50 on them tonight. Yeah, Let's go. Right. It's about us, guys. It's not about them. They want to be y'all. They talked about it last night. That there, they want to be y'all. It's not about them. It's about yeah. us. Worry yeah. about us. Let's go. All right. Let's have a night. Football. All right, this is about a football team. And what everyone's going to be watching tonight, okay, and you don't think any stand, any fans are up in that stands, there's 25,000 people watching this damn game, watching you guys cheer and you want. There's guys from 1930, 1940, literally going to be watching on a friggin' machine somewhere in America, wanting you guys to win and hoping to damn well you're going to win this football game. Yeah. 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 Remember this, you're not alone. Second thing, you guys don't understand this, okay, but I've been all over the freaking world. This is my last thing we're out of time. I've been all over the world. I've been to 50 countries. You guys didn't know that about me. I think I'm some guy that works at prep. All right, I did that for five years, okay? I've been everywhere, okay? I have seen the wall of Jericho. I have been in Israel. I have been at Jericho, okay? It's in the middle of freaking nowhere in Israel. I was in a bus. It took all day to go there. I was there, okay? 
Wall of Jericho one time in life was this huge monstrous thing nobody could get into, like the Great Wall of China. I've been there too. Not this guy ever at the highest spot, and I got a slip here to prove it. All right? All right? But the Wall of Jericho was something that was incredibly awesome. Them using this term, the Wall of Yugno, the Wall of Yugno, about their offensive line protecting Yugno, trying to make some play on those words. You understand what they're doing with that? Okay? I'm gonna tell you something. When I was at the Wall of Jericho, you know what it is now? It's a freaking pile of rubble! It's rubble! Yeah. Let's go damn it! So let's knock that damn wall down. You understand? Let's do this together. Let's do this the prep pride. Let's do this clean and let's win this freaking game. You understand me? Let's go! Let's go. Mary Queen of Prep! Great for us! Mary Queen of Prep! Great for us! Jay, it's the first of two matchups with Cathedral Prep and McDowell going head to head. The winner of tonight's game would start off the season 3 0 and take control of the Region 9 lead. The Ramblers standing together in unity tonight as Brad Orlando's Trojans tried to break an eight game losing streak. Last win of the series came in 2011. Said I, you go with the pistol on second and five. Little toss play to Rivera. Rivera to the 40, puts his head down, dives for the first down. Now takes the snap, gives it to Rivera, first down, hop step, stays on his feet, stretches the football ahead to the a short shotgun. Rivera goes over most with the left slot, he gets the shovel pass, Rivera, cutting left, Rivera, running hard, he will broke an eye, you go for the pistol, give it to Rivera, Rivera, bouncing off one tackle, spun off of it, fighting his way near the goal line. First quarter, a drive that soaks up nearly seven minutes, is capped off by senior quarterback Chris Yukno's short touchdown plunge on the keeper, 7-0, McDowell. Out. Parks, the deep back, Campbell, the fullback, and an offset eye out of the pistol. They'll give it to Parks. And Parks hard running north and south. Takes the snap. Steps up. He's going to try and run with it. And Ozinski's going to wrap him up. About two yards shy of the first down of the Trojans. You know, from the pistol. Play fake to Ramahi. Bootleg out to the far side. Flag down. You know, into prep territory. He's set three by two. Now they bring Rivera, and they'll give him a little shovel pass from the left slot. Rivera to the 35. Rivera side. Rivera side steps over the 40. Two by two set, one back. You kill from the shotgun. First and ten from midfield. And quick pass to Sobolesky to his right. Two by one set with Heibel on the left wing. They'll give it to Rivera on second and just bounces outside. Tricks another tackle. 35. Rivera spins away from another tackle left. Rivera and William Sobolesky to the right. Empty set. You kill from the gun. Second and five from the prep 26. He's going to fire near side. Caught by Sobolesky. 20, 15, 10. Breaks a tackle. Sobolesky reaching for the goal line. Down at the one yard line. Trojans make it 14 0 on the very first play of the second quarter. Yukno keeps it again for another goal line touchdown run. 14 0 McDowell later. This game, especially the front, so that time it was a linebacker, but they've been jumping off because of the hard hand claps and other cadences. Here's Parks through a big seam to the 40. Parks around a block on Emling. It's going to be a block in the back as the flag comes from the line judge on the near side. Parks gets inside the 25, down to around the 20 yard line for Cathedral. Prep. It's going to be a first down, but it's coming back. Sample from the gun. Gives it to Parks, his sidecar. Breaks one tackle, breaks a second. Back is Parks. Sample from the pistol to give to Parks. And Parks is going to be very close, at least waiting for the line judge and the head linesman to line up. And he's going to be short by about half a yard. Long situation. Rivera, the left hip of you know you know will work out of a deep shotgun. Takes the snap in his own end zone. Quick throw to the near side. It's going to be intercepted, and it's a pick six heading into the end zone is LaVon Rowan for the Ramblers. About five yards on the interception return for six. And that's a huge play momentum-wise for Cathedral Prep. The end zone, 14-7. And later in the half, right before the break, Lenny McLaughlin, mid-range field, field goal, makes it 17-7 McDowell. It was Crawford fields it at the one-yard line. 5, 10, 15, and a huge collision. Lucky now down 10 with the football. Call it their own 16-yard line now. A sample takes the snap, fake to Parks. He's going to throw outside. Brent Pryor called it. The catch is made by Fortin, and he's got a first down on the quick slant to the far side ahead to the 34-yard line. Offset backfield, Campbell the fullback. Parks the tailback, sample. Quick throw to the far side, caught by Fortin. Pushed out of bounds. You need to pay attention. You got a player down on the sideline. He came off the side of the field again after that play, and he was walking around for a while, and he just kind of collapsed. Saw you looking up and down yeah. the sideline on a second down in seven. What a hit by Tate on the quick pass to Troop. Calling a timeout. This is a little ridiculous. 
I'm sorry. I, I that, that was a, they should if they were gonna do this, they should have stopped this a long time ago. Not wait for a third and ten play where seven plays went by before they called before they stopped play. So an official timeout on the field. We're gonna step away as they attain to Jonathan Heibel. Now you have to after this long stoppage. Now you have to kind of get yourself rocked, you know, back in and get focused back. Rivera on the right hip of Yukno takes it out of the gun, sprint out to the right. Rivera with a nice block to free up Yukno to throw to the near sideline intended for Sobolewski. Did he get a foot and bounce? He did. What an incredible catch. Every week. First and 10 at the Ramblers 34 yard line. Yukno to throw, slam, caught. Sobolewski makes the catch and carries the tackler down. Yard shotgun. Takes the snap. Quick throw to Fort and far side. Goes out of bounds in front of Emling. He's going to be right at the stick. Should be a first down with a missed 34 yard field goal by Lenny McLaughlin to go up. 13. Sample on the run, sweeping outside. Another first down. Out of bounds, far boundary. Oh. And a bunch of flags. Sample claps the hands, takes the snap screen. Good one, makes the catch in the left slot. The third quarter. Sample this time on a zone read. Keep trying to slip out of the leg tackle of Wood, and then he's fixed remaining in the third 10 point McDowell lead. Sample takes the snap, gives it to Parks. And Parks is going to twist his way to the first down. Gun second and five. Quick throw to the near side, looking for Troop. Makes the catch, goes out of bounds. Has a Rambler's first down. Al 18 on the near hash. Sample, hop step, quick throw. Troop makes the catch, trying to break the tackle of Ozinski, and he spins down to the two yard line in the Johns Wildwood red zone at the first and goal for the Ramblers. Yeah, Troop. Will kicks a chip shot field goal to cut the lead to 17 10 for prep. And then Yukno, a nice drive in response as he gets the big run to put McDowell inside at the prep two. Same drive, Taha Ramahi scores up the gut for the Trojans, and McDowell takes the two touchdown lead again, 24 to 10. With trip receivers to the left from the gun. Sample throws to the single receiver near side. Ford breaks a tackle, and he'll be tackled at the 35 yard line. He's burned one early. Sample takes the shotgun snap on first and 10. Now running to the left side. Three yard line, quick tempo for the Ramblers from the gun. Sample has time to throw. It's gonna fire in the middle. It's gonna be caught by Fort, makes the catch. And spun down inside the 25, down to the 24 yard being it. Sample flushed out of the pocket as we return to play, running at the 15. Prep inside the five, fourth and goal. And Tamar Sample's pass to Daniel Liebel falls incomplete. And McDowell takes over on downs. They end the streak and pick up the rivalry win for the first time since 2011, beating Cathedral Prep 24 to 10. First thoughts after that one. Well, I mean, the first thing, I mean, this thing's bigger than football, you know, and uh, I'm not taking any away from, from McDowell whatsoever. I mean, they had to play a great game. Hats off their team and their coaches. I mean, I'm more worried about the young man who, you know, went down and we're, uh, you know, and uh, just devastated by that is, you know, is, uh, you know, just keeping our, him in our, in our thoughts and prayers and our family. So hopefully he's okay. But, um, you know, but yeah, I got to give credit to McDowell. I mean, they, they beat us in, uh, you know, most passes of the game. And, uh, you know, uh, just you know, hats off to them. You know, they, uh, they did a really great job. And, uh, you know, you know, our kids played well. And, uh, you know, I thought we did some good things. But, you know, we got to get a lot better if we're going to beat them in, uh, in three weeks, you know. So, I, you know, bottom line is, you know, they deserve to win. They outplayed us, outcoached us. And uh, that's, how I, that's how I feel about it. So, that's on me. And, uh, you know, at the same time, you know, it doesn't take anything away from them, you know. You know, they played a great game. Uh, tell me a little bit. I mean, obviously, it, it kind of took over the game for a brief moment in that third quarter. It kind of took the wind out of the sails, out of, I think, out of the whole stadium. I mean, well, how, how yeah, dare you? As, you, see, as, you, see, as, you know, as it should. I mean, uh, something like that happens. That's what's the most important thing. I mean, there's nothing more important than somebody, some kid, you know, young man's, uh, you know, life and, uh, and safety. And so, yeah, I mean, it, as it should. You know, it's hard for... You know, for us to even get back out there, and and, and, and our, our guys aren't teammates, you know. So and, and the coaches, we don't coach them, but you know, so you know, I give them credit for just coming out and you know playing, you know, with you know passion and heartly. You know, they did. You know, that's here and they're gonna they're, they're playing for him, and and uh, you know, so again, yeah, I mean, that's but it, it should take the, it take the uh, life out of the stadium, so to speak, because you know, it's a uh, that's the more important thing. Uh, any other thoughts, coach? Or you just uh, look forward to getting back to the drawing board. Yeah, well, you know, we'll regroup and, you know, we've had a nice long run here and you know, we didn't do what we needed to do to win tonight and that's that's fine, you know, but, you know, uh, hasn't been under, undefeated, uh, you know, team in the Super Bowl since 1972. I mean, teams lose they, all the time and, uh, 
you know, that's why I told the boys, you know, I said, you know, we're gonna, we have another chance at these guys and uh, in a couple of weeks, three weeks from now. And, uh, you know, we'll hope that we play a little bit better and have a chance to win that one. But for right now, yeah, we got to regroup and get better and uh, get ready for Butler for next week. All right, thanks, Coach. And now, Mike Finner with sports. Welcome on in. It's time for Sports McDowell. Senior linebacker Jonathan Johnny Heibel was life flighted to a Pittsburgh hospital last night after collapsing on the sideline during the Trojans' victory over Cathedral Prep in Region 9 football. The Times News was first to report that Heibel underwent brain surgery, but no doubt still a scary situation for the entire McDowell community and for all of us around the area in District 10. The game was put on pause last night during the third quarter for nearly 10 minutes as trainers and medical personnel came to the aid of Heibel on the sideline before he was transported to the hospital. A GoFundMe page has been started to assist Johnny and his family that you can find at our website, yourerie.com, at the local sports tab. Next up on Prep versus everybody. We're fortunate to have this opportunity. We thought about it all damn summer. We might not get the opportunity to play football. We got the damn opportunity to play football. Enjoy every damn moment of it. All of us coaches would love to go back and take your damn place right now and step on that field and play again. Enjoy the moment. Make the most of it. Go hit these out. Let's go win a damn game. Let's go. Get that bad team out of the front of the 